Law and the Promise, chapter 3. Turn the wheel backwards. Turn the wheel backwards. The quote, there are two, two different sets of quotation marks. The first, oh let your strong imagination turn the great wheel backwards until Troy unburned. The second quote, all life is throughout the ages nothing but the continuing solution of a continuous synthetic problem. H.G. Wells. All life is throughout the ages nothing but the continuing solution of a continuous synthetic problem written by H.G. Wells. The perfectly stable or static state is always unattainable. The end attained objectively always realizes more than the end the individual originally had in view. This in turn creates a new situation of inner conflict needing novel solutions to force man along the path of creative evolution. His touch is infinite and lends a yonder to all ends. Today's events are bound to disturb yesterday's established order. The creatively active imagination invariably unsettles a pre-existing peace of mind. Notice this statement. Today's events are bound to disturb yesterday's established order. The creatively active imagination invariably unsettles a pre-existing peace of mind. Very powerful statement. The question may arise as to how, by representing others to ourselves as better than they really are, or better than they really were, or mentally rewriting a letter to make it conform to our wish, or by revising the scene of an accident, the interview with the employer, or so on, could change what seems to be the unalterable facts of the past. But remember my claim, Devil says, for imagining. Imagining creates reality. What it makes, it can unmake. It is not only conservative, building a life from images supplied by memory. It is also creatively transformative, altering a thing already in being. The parable of the unjust steward gives the answer to this question. We can alter our world by means of a certain illegal imaginal practice, by means of a mental falsification of the facts, that is, by means of a certain intentional imaginal alteration of that which we have experienced. All this is done in one's own imagination. This is a form of falsehood which not only is not condemned, but is actually approved in the gospel teaching. By means of such a falsehood, a man destroys the causes of evil and acquires friends, and on the strength of this revision proves, judging by the high praise the unjust steward received from his master, that he is deserving of confidence. Because imagining creates reality. We can carry revision to the extreme and revise a scene that would be otherwise unforgivable. 
we learn to distinguish between man who is all imagination and those states into which he may enter. An unjust steward, looking at another's distress, will represent or represent the other to himself as he ought to be seen. Were he himself in need, he would enter his dream in his imagination and imagine what he would see and how things would seem and how people would act after these things should be. Then in this state, he would fall asleep, feeling the way he would expect to feel under such circumstances. Now, let's do this once more. Because imagining creates reality, we can carry revision to the extreme and revise a scene that would be otherwise unforgivable. We learn to distinguish between a human who is all imagination and those states into which he or she may enter. An unjust steward looking at another's distress will represent or represent the other to himself as he ought to be seen. Were he himself in need, he would enter his dream in his imagination and imagine what he would see and how things would seem and how people would act after these things should be. Then in this state he would fall asleep feeling the way he would expect to feel under such circumstances. Would that all the Lord's people were unjust stewards, mentally to themselves falsifying the facts of life to deliver individuals forever. For the imaginal change goes forward until at length the altered pattern is realized on the heights of attainment. Our future is our imaginal activity in its creative march. Imagine better than the best you know. Imaginal activity in its creative march. Imagine better than the best you know. To revise the past is to reconstruct it with new content. Human, humans should daily relive the day as they wish they had lived it. Revising the scenes to make them conform to their ideals. For instance, suppose today's mail brought disappointing news, revise the letter, mentally rewrite it, and make it conform to the news you wish you had received. Then in imagination, read the revised letter over and over again, and this will arouse the feeling of naturalness. An imaginal act becomes fact as soon as we feel natural in the act. This is the essence of revision, and revision results in repeal. This is exactly what F.B. did. So he's going to tell a story now about F.B. What he did, how he carried it out. Late in July, I wrote to a real estate agent of my desire to sell a piece of land which had been a financial burden to me. His negative reply listed all the reasons why sales were at a standstill in that area, and he forecast a bleak period of waiting until after the first of the year. I received his letter on a Tuesday, and in my imagination I rewrote it with words indicating that the agent was eager to take my listing. I read this revised letter over and over, and I extended my imaginal drama until your theme of the four mighty ones of our imagination from your book Seed Time and Harvest, the producer, the author, the director, and the actor. So he extends the imaginal drama using the theme of the four mighty ones of our imagination. And he got that from the book where we've talked about that, the producer, the author, the director, and the actor. He says, in my imaginal scene as producer, I suggest the theme, the lot is sold for profit. As the author, I wrote this simple scene, which to me implied fulfillment. 
standing in the real estate office, I extended my hand to the agent and said, thank you, sir. And he replied, it was a pleasure doing business with you. As director, I rehearsed myself as actor until that scene was vividly real, and I felt the relief which would be mine if the burden were really lifted. Three days later, the agent I had originally written phoned me saying he had a deposit for my lot at the price I had specified. I signed the papers in his office the next day, extended my hand and said, thank you, sir. The agent replied, it was a pleasure doing business with you. Five days after I had constructed and enacted an imaginal scene, it became a physical reality. It was played word for word just as I had heard it in my imagination. The feeling of relief and joy came, not so much from selling the property, but from the incontrovertible proof that my imagined drama worked. This is a story from the initials FB. If the thing accomplished were all, how futile. But F.B. discovered a power within himself that can consciously create circumstances. By mentally falsifying the facts of life, man moves from passive reaction to active creation. Let me do that once more. By mentally falsifying the facts of life, man moves from passive reaction to active creation. This breaks the wheel of recurrence and builds a cumulatively enlarging future. If man does not always create in the full sense of the word, it is because he is not faithful to his vision, or else he thinks of what he wants rather than from his wish fulfilled. Man or human or human is such an extraordinary synthesis partly tied by his senses, or his or her senses, and partly free to dream that his or her internal conflicts are perennial. The state of conflict in the individual is expressed in society. Life is a romantic adventure. It's a journey to live creatively, imagining novel solutions to ever more complex problems is far nobler than to restrain or kill our desire. All that is desired can be imagined into existence. Wouldst thou be in a dream and yet not asleep? Try to revise your dream every night before falling asleep. Try to visualize clearly and enter into the revised scene which would be the imaginal solution to your problem. The revised imaginal structure may have a great influence on others, but that is not your concern. The other, in quotation marks, quotation marks is the other, the other, other is in quotation marks. The other influence in the following story is profoundly grateful for that influence. Here's the story. Last August, while on a blind date, I met the man I wanted to marry. This happens sometimes, and it happened to me. He was everything I had ever thought of as desirable in a husband. Two days after this enchanted evening, it was necessary for me to change my place of residence because of my work. And that same week, the mutual friend who had introduced me to this man moved away from the city. I realized that the man I had met probably did not know of my new address, and frankly, I was not sure he knew my name. After your last lecture, I spoke to you of this situation. Although I had plenty of other dates, I cannot forget this one man. Your lecture was based on revising our day, and after speaking to you, I determined to revise my day every day. Before going to sleep that night, I felt I was in a different bed, in my own home as a married woman, and not as a single working girl sharing an apartment with three other girls. I twisted an imaginary wedding band on my imaginary left hand, saying over and over to myself, this is wonderful, 
I really am Mrs. J.E. And I fell asleep in what was, a moment before, a waking dream. I repeated this imaginary scene for one month, night at the night. The first week in October, he found me, in quotation marks. On our second date, I knew my dreams were rightly placed. Your teaching tells us to live in the end of our desire until that desire becomes fact. So although I did not know how he felt toward me, I continued, night after night, living in the feeling of my dream realized. The results? In November, he proposed. In January, we announced our engagement. and the following May, we were married. The loveliest part of it all, however, is that I am happier than I ever dreamed possible. And I know in my heart, he is too. Mrs. am happier than I ever dreamed possible, and I know in my heart he is too. Mrs. J.E. By using her imagination radically instead of conservatively, by building her world out of pure dreams of fancy, rather than using images supplied by memory, she brought about the fulfillment of her dreams. Common sense would have used images supplied by her memory and thereby perpetuated the fact of lack in her life. Imagination created what she desired out of a dream of fancy. Everyone must live wholly on the level of imagination and it must be consciously and deliberately undertaken. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool region, cool reason over comprehends. If our time of revision be well spent, we need not worry about results. Our fondest hopes will be realized. Of thou real earth, quotation here, am I? In whose dream do we exist? Close quotation. Here's a quotation again. Open quotation. Are thou real, earth? Am I? In whose dream do we exist? Close quotation. There's no inevitable permanence in anything. Both past and present continue to exist only because they are sustained by imagining on some level or other. And a radical transformation of life is always possible by man, by woman, revising the undesirable part of it. In his letter, Mr. R.S. questions this subject of influence. So here's the letter. During your current series of lectures, trouble developed with collections on one of my trust deeds. The security, a house and a lot, was neglected and run down. The owners were apparently spending their money in bars while their two little girls, aged 9 and 11, were noticeably uncared for. However, forgetting appearances, I began to revise the situation. In my imagination, I drove my wife past the property and said to her, Isn't the yard beautiful? It's so neat and well cared for. Those people really show their love for their home. This is one trust deed we will never have to worry about. I would, in quotation marks, see the house and lot as I wanted it to be. A place so lovely, it gave me a warm glow of pleasure. Every time the thought of this property came to me, I repeated my imaginal scene. After I had been practicing this revision for some time, the woman who lived in the house had an automobile accident. While she was in the hospital, her husband disappeared. The children were cared for by neighbors, and I was tempted to visit the woman in the hospital to reassure her of assistance, if necessary. But how could I? Would my imaginal scene imply that she and her family were happy, successful, and obviously contented? So I did nothing but my daily revision. A short time while, a short while after leaving the hospital, the woman and her two daughters disappeared also. Pavements were sent in on the property, and a few months later she reappeared with a wedding certificate 
and a new husband. In this writing, all payments are right up to date. The two little girls are obviously happy and well cared for. And a room has been added to the property by the owners, giving our trust deed additional security. We're sent in on the property, and a few months later, she reappeared with a wedding certificate and a new husband. Now, get this now. It said that she had previously 